Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the country's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got three for you today. Would you like to introduce yourselves? Yes, OK. I'm Matt Johnson, TV presenter, and it's a pleasure to, to be here. And I'm an asthmatic. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Therapy. I'm Roger Black, uh, a former Olympic uh, athlete and medalist, and I have chronic heart disease. <laughs> <laughs> a dating service. Um, and I'm Amelia Lilly. I'm a singer and actress, um, and I am a type 1 diabetic. And you're also delicious. Let's not leave that off the list, Amelia. I saw you just two weeks Sorry? ago. Well, you were a princess, but then you ended up all green and in love with an ogre. This could be sort of our future relationship. Yes. Yes, yep, that is um, that is what I do for a living currently. You were terrific. Congratulations on that. I've seen it many times over the years and I thought it was compelling. It was a great show as well. They put a lot into it, haven't they? Yeah, it's a very, very um, high standard musical um, and probably the biggest I've ever done, actually. Um, but yeah, I feel very lucky to be a part of it. We're talking flu season today and the reason all three of you are on, which is a bit odd because you're all so different, but you're all linked in the same way that the conditions you have could be affected by the flu and it could be pretty serious, couldn't it, Matt? Yes, absolutely. And this is what we're here to, to try and raise awareness for today is, is the fact that uh, last year, 3.5 million people in the UK, under 65, um, who have an underlying health condition, very much like the three of us here, um, didn't take up uh, the opportunity to have a free flu vaccine. And um, and we're here to tell people that it's there. It's a service for you. Um, we we are high risk if you are um, in, in asthmatic or suffer from diabetes or or a heart condition. You're high risk, and this service is service is for you, and it's out there. And um, please don't um, miss the opportunity to be kind to yourself and to look after yourself. I think of the three of you, Roger. You're the most likely to die during this interview. How is your heart condition right now? <laughs> yeah, that was. Is that because no, I've got heart disease is, is, or, I'm, or I'm 52? Which one is it? No, you are right, actually. No, you're right, because because I'm the difference between myself and, and my other two esteemed colleagues is that uh, they have to deal with the diabetes and the asthma. It's with them all the time. Um, so Amelia's you know, having to inject herself and, and, and Matt's having to use inhalers and stuff. It's, it's, it's obvious that, that they haven't. When you have heart disease, you, no one can see it. And uh, in my case, I have a I have an inc incompetent aortic valve, so it doesn't work very well. But it hasn't, you know, so far so good. It hasn't really affected me in a, in a couple of incidents, but nothing major. But it would affect me if I got flu. And and that's the point. And, and you know, yes, you're right. You're right. You know, if, if I if I got uh, ill and got an infection on, on my heart valve, then yeah, you're right. <laughs> I am probably the most likely to drop down, but uh, it's not going to happen. Isn't it interesting and ironic that you would think of the three of you, you were the least likely to have a heart condition. I mean, you were yeah. certainly the most athletic. You're certainly the fittest. Yeah, yeah it's a bit. It's a, it's a strange one. It's something I didn't publicise when I was an athlete it was something my dad worried about every day it was something that was monitored a, a, a lot actually behind the scenes but it obviously didn't affect me it, I mean it clearly didn't you know I couldn't have done what I did as an athlete if it was something that yeah and there's a, there's an argument my heart um my heart actually um, may may have compensated for its inefficiency, but but as I get older, it becomes much more relevant um, to me. So so therefore, you know, something like this campaign to raise awareness to people like myself that have heart disease that maybe feel absolutely fine, but they know they have they have uh, something wrong with their heart. It's very important that they 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 go and get the flu jab because you you don't want to put your heart under unnecessary pressure, and flu will do that. Of the three of you, I've got to say, Matt Johnson, you're my least favourite. Do you want to know why? Carry on. I'm the most jealous of you. I think if I looked like you, I'd be so much more successful. I'm a deeply unattractive man, as Amelia will tell you. You seem to have everything. I mean, you've got this sort of dashingly handsome look about you. The ladies find you a nice bit of trouser. You're very good on the TV and you're incredibly competent. I think where I first saw you was on this morning. You did a great job at that. And since then, you're sort of flying, aren't you, really? Oh, thank you very much. You're very, very kind, by the way. What I've, a compliment. Uh, but thank you. Yeah, uh, since leaving this morning, I've kind of I've really dedicated my life towards trying to help people uh, understand their own mental health and to try and get people mm. to discuss and to, to normalize uh, mental health and what it means to people and um, and that's that's gone well I think you know we, we, we're getting a lot better um, especially on radio and on media with any sort of broadcasting out as we are discussing the topic a lot more um, so it's, uh, it's very interesting me myself and Roger were talking earlier about how you value success and what 
what success actually is and you know to me at one point success was being on this morning and, and doing all all that type of stuff and at the moment I value success with raising awareness and trying to help people and that's something that I, I want to achieve and and yeah thank you very much it's, it's been um, an interesting few years but um, yeah nevertheless it's been um, p- full of purpose I just did an interview earlier and I was talking to uh, a rugby guy actually who again like you two is incredibly fit sort of sportsman and all that stuff I'm the opposite I was sort of the chubby fat kid at school who was bullied but I've never had that thing where I can't get out of bed and I think it's hard for people to understand who don't suffer from mental illness that they can look at somebody like you who appears to have everything and then when you tell us that you have daily struggles it's somewhat shocking and it seems like recently it's the first time in, in my lifetime certainly that people are willing to openly admit they have problems they're struggling and they're finding a way to function every day and survive exactly Uh, a mental illness is non-prejudice it it, it gets to you regardless of how rich famous or uh, healthy or whatever it it, it can get you regardless and and what the main thing is like what what we do in talking about flu vaccines here is it's awareness and talking about it normalizing a discussion making it possible and attainable to talk about these things uh, with your family members with your friends and communication is so important and that goes for all uh, matters of health and mental health and we are in a better situation now I think um, publicly it's a lot better in inner cities um, I think a lot of people are talking about these issues a lot more uh, but where I come from and in working class areas it isn't discussed a lot more it's a it's right. a lot to do with purpose and a lot to, lot to do with self-esteem and and fingers crossed we can get it we can get it to a good phase where people can feel honest and open and they can feel as if they can be vulnerable I think vulnerability is one of the most attractive things in a human being and we shouldn't be afraid to be vulnerable. You're right. It gets to people who probably are not in a sort of media lovey world who can't talk about it and makes it somewhat more digestible because that's all you're trying to do really is go, look, you're not alone. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And you are not alone. And then regardless of where you come from, um, like I say, wealth, it doesn't matter. You know, people get affected by mental health issues all the time. It's, it's, it's the biggest killer for young men in the UK and it's, it's getting worse and worse. And it could be prevented by awareness and conversation. And, and that's so, so, so super important. And it's, 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 it's all, it comes down to everything that like we're talking today about physical health, about the flu and getting the right vaccines. And we're all so that comes down to mental health it comes down to self-care and it comes down to looking after yourself and knowing that there's people out there that want to help you let's talk to you Amelia I I mean we've spoken many times over the years with your career I think you're so surprising as an artist because you could have gone sort of the tabloid way you could have gone the reality TV way and actually you went the hardest way which is doing eight shows a week in a musical oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah it's you know it's been amazing though because obviously you know like I you know I've done X Factor and I did Celebrity big brother last year but I've you know I what I what I have done is I have stuck to my roots and I, I have continued performing and I haven't just gone on reality show after reality show like I have worked in between and do what I love to do and that's perform and sing and act on stage and yeah I'm doing currently eight shows sometimes nine shows a week on a tour uh UK and Ireland tour and it is it's tough I'm getting you know I'm getting greenified every day let's say um and I get to wear a fat suit which is also pretty cool sounds like a hen night uh yeah um (laughs) but yeah it's it is I feel like yeah I feel like I've got um the best job in the world What's great about Shrek as well currently on tour is the fact that it's a bit naughty for the dads. There's lots of sort of in gags. Uh, the guy who spends his whole night on the knees, how's he doing? He must be in agony. Sam Holmes, yeah, he is fantastic. Do you know what though? He, what you see on stage with him, that is him off stage as well. He is one of the funniest men I've ever met in my life. You can tell that comic time. He, he is hilarious. Yeah, really nice. And again, your voice, it's so pure and brilliant. And to be a princess, you've got to sort of have, have that angelic voice. I wonder how tough it is to sing these songs eight times a week. Are you living like a nun? Pretty much, yeah. I have no social life. <laughs> um, but no, I'm, you know, you have to look after yourself. And look, this is the toughest job I've ever done. I'm 23 and I'm playing a leading role that I'm actually the youngest person to ever play Princess Fiona. Um, and I now know why, because, you know, you have to look after yourself. You can't go out after a show and have a drink with your friends. You have to go home to bed and you can't talk during the day. I'm constantly on voice rest. Um, yeah, it is tough. It's a big scene. 
thing. It's a big acting part. It's all singing, all dancing, all acting. But I absolutely love it. And yeah, I'll be, I'll be gutted when it ends. I've always wanted to be a giraffe in The Lion King. What about you, Matt? Oh, God. Do you know what? If they ever do the Greatest Showman musical, I could <laughs> happily be the Greatest Showman. You Hugh would, Jackman, you Petey Barnum. you get it just on looks, man. That would be amazing. Yeah. From now on, I could do it. I could be the bearded lady. We could do it together. <laughs> <laughs> You're in. If we can cast this right now, Roger, what would you uh, do? In the old days, I'd like to be Zac Efron, but those days are over. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet you, I bet you could still, still scissor kick, can't you? I was doing the Google of Roger Black, and it's very interesting the images that come up. I go to the gym every day, right? And I look worse now than I did when I started. How do you get those ball things on the top of your arms? All those pictures of me with, it would have been when I was running. So right. I'm not, they've gone. Those balls have gone. That's, and sorry, sorry to phrase that. No, um, no, 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 look, you know what? When you're training every day and you're training to, to, you know, you're not training to look good. You're training to run fast and win medals. It's just part of it. It just comes with it. But uh, when you finish, you finish and you, it's much harder to keep it going. Talk to me about the camaraderie of being an Olympic athlete. It must be incredible to be part of that community at that level, being that hot and successful and then being on the TV, winning awards and having glory of the nation. It's not bad, is it? It's all right. It's all right. But I mean, it was, yeah, look, it was, I was very fortunate. I mean, I was very fortunate that, that I had a career that ended up well. I mean, a lot of people have the talent and something happens along the way and, and, and it doesn't happen. But look, I was even more fortunate in the way that, because I ran the 400 metres, I ran individually and my greatest day was winning the individual medals at the Olympics. But I also got to be part of a relay team. And that was when it was really fun because you, you were part of a team, you were with other characters, but not just characters, you know, people like Chris Akabusi, they're the biggest characters oh, British yeah. athletics ever had. Um, yeah. John Reed, just don't remember, Daley Thompson, all these, but I was, I was part of a really exciting time in athletics. It was a very golden age. Um, and yeah, look, but the truth is when you're doing it, you're doing it, you're so focused on it and the pressure and all that stuff, you don't really necessarily appreciate it at the time as much as you do as the years go by. Amelia, just talk to me about the diabetes and doing a show for two and a half hours. I guess you've got to be careful what you do and don't eat, have you? Yeah, definitely. Um, it is tough, um, but I'm in such a routine now. Um, and I always make sure that I check my glucose before the show, in the interval, and obviously after. And I'm, I'm, you know, the company I work for are amazing, and uh, they have trundles both sides of the stage, every venue with Lucasaid, um, and uh, and sweets and stuff for me. So it is. It's it's very. You know, I feel very lucky that I'm looked after as well. But I also know my symptoms really well, and I think that's so important. Well, I, I was thinking about this with Amelia because uh, of the three of us, she's the one who's out there working, you know, much Slowly. harder than we are. Yeah. So she is somebody who, you know, the flu jab's really important for someone like her mm. because if she was to be hit down with the flu now, it doesn't just, just affect her; it affects yeah. her her trade. Mm -hmm. I could mm. probably get through mine because, you know, if I'm speaking at a yeah. conference or whatever, and you might be able to. But for yeah. someone like Amelia, who really is having to look after herself she's a great example of somebody whether she has diabetes or not who, yeah. who should be getting that flu jab well the sort of pastor they're, they're a wonderful company that are trying to help us encourage people to do something for themselves and and that today is to for, is to encourage people at home if, if you feel as if you are in the high risk category like we are mm -hmm. please go to your um, local you go to your doctor go to your local pharmacy and and find out whether you are um, a, it, this applies to you and I would I would strongly recommend uh, doing and having a flu jab because it takes four to five minutes it's painless mm -hmm. and and as well we're, we're encouraging you to be healthy in all aspects of your life why not do this for yourself and uh, and to the 3.5 million people that are all listening right now please go and help yourself and be kind to yourself don't put my figures down it's at least I'm sorry I just thought it might be dipping because we've been rambling <laughs> I made a career of that what's next for you Matt I mean you've had such a great career so far I, I, I've got a feeling you're going to end up like an Eamon one of these days where you end up being sort of a mainstream presenter doing everything is that your ambition um, I, yeah, I, the goalposts change constantly about um, how I vision, uh, how I envision success and, um, and my kind of goals in life. To be to be a friend of Eamon Holmes um, is is a, like a huge accomplishment as, in itself. But like, if I can have a long lasting career like him in the world of broadcasting, as we know, broadcasting and TV and everything's changing drastically with Netflix, uh, the non appointment of view TV, like you know the X Factor etc. programs, they're all sliding 
watching and viewed viewing figures so who's watching telly and why are they watching and when are they watching is always constantly changing which also makes it very exciting um, and pro pro producing a film at the moment and two documentaries so I'm trying to keep working I'm trying to stay relevant but I'm also trying to do the right thing with regards to mental health so you know, look if I can still be around um, in, when I'm 60 you know later on and still doing what I'm doing now and I love what I'm doing now I'd be extremely extremely happy that would be wonderful I think you're a class act I don't like you you're far too handsome if you could be less handsome it would help my career and uh, we wish you all the best Matt Johnson and we look at Amelia Lily you're still in uh, Shrek when do you finish in there? Um, I finish November the 4th in Dublin Congratulations a really stunning uh, tribute to your talent that it lets you shine because there's so many parts of that show where you get to just do the business and take over it's brilliant yeah I, 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 it is it's so much fun I love it and as for you Roger going to keep doing this sort of motivational stuff because that's what we've got sort of known for now isn't it is, is yeah. you going out helping yeah. people yeah I've always I've always done that and I'll always do that but but things evolve I, I my day to day stuff I run a business with uh, Steve Backley who was a very successful Olympic javelin thrower so we're, we're, we're involved in performance and, and, and in, in other areas property and, and, in, and just encouraging people if they want to change their lives giving them options I suppose all three of you, what you prove is no matter whether you've got a heart condition, whether it's diabetes, asthma or anything else, anything is possible. You're all masters in your own field and doing incredibly well. Thank you so much for your time. Roger Black, thanks to Amelia Lilly and uh, Matt Johnson too. Have a great afternoon, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.